Hey, in this video, I want to talk about the truth about Hamza, because there's a few things that you guys don't know that you probably should know. And for those of you who don't know who he is, Hamza is a personal development YouTuber who's absolutely killing it right now. When I go to my YouTube analytics, there's a section that tells me what other channels people in my audience watch. And as you can see, it's Hamza, Hamza, Hamza Unfiltered, which is his second channel. Hamza, Hamza, Hamza. He's absolutely killing it. The YouTube algorithm's loving him. And he's got a cult of people. Yep, he calls himself a cult leader, which is something we're gonna unpack. He's also created video about me that some people may call a hate video. He's then apologized for that video in public and in private, which I'll be talking about. He tweeted me asking about my opinion on that video and I responded to that, which we'll get to. He's also spammed a subreddit community that I created, trying to sell his course, which he spammed again and again and again. And the course that he created was inspired by slash stolen from a lot of the ideas that I talked about in my dopamine detoxing series. Um, is that everything? I think that that's pretty much everything. Uh, my history with Hamza. We've never spoken in person, but I wanted to make this video kind of just raw and unfiltered so that I could get as honest of, a, uh, of, of, of my actual honest opinion on him as possible. So the very first time that I heard about Hamza, I think was that video that he created titled Andrew Kirby is lying to you. The video trash. I watched that video and basically the contents of that video is uh, about a video that I had created that was an unlisted video that was used to make people more aware of a cohort-based course that I was selling that helped people beat procrastination. And in this video, the main criticism that I that he had um, was that it was a video primarily to make people aware of the program instead of actually trying to help people with these problems. And he's pretty much correct on that. That feedback was heard, that feedback was valid, and I can take that on board. Whether that warrants a video exposing me and with my face in the title, so that when you now search Andrew Kirby on YouTube, it's one of the first searches, is a different story. I remember he messaged me and he asked me, what did you think about this? And I responded that it was a video created by a status-driven man who's trying to elevate his career by stepping on other people's. So let's break that down. What did my response mean? And I'll, I'll get on to did it affect me in just a second. So I said that it was a status-driven man. What's a status-driven man? A status is somebody that wants to climb the social hierarchy. They want to make themselves appear cool at the expense of other people. Because if something's a hierarchy, for you to increase yourself in that hierarchy, somebody else has to decrease themselves. So what Hamza was trying to do was he was trying to increase his status and trying to decrease my status. Or maybe he wasn't directly trying to decrease my status, but decreasing my status was a byproduct of him trying to increase his own status. And this is a super common tactic that a bunch of YouTubers who are really desperate to try and grow use. They make hate videos. They try and step on other people to try and grow. They try to make themselves appear better by making others appear worse. Super common, it's just part of the game. I, I understand it, it works, it's fair game, you know, there's freedom of speech, people can say whatever it is they wanna say. So fine, it is what it is. Did it affect me? Yes. How much did it affect me is a different question. Did it affect me as much as some people would think that it affected me? No. I've been in this game for a few years now. I've had my fair share of hate comments and a video like this doesn't surprise me at all. I remember watching it with a friend at the time when it first came out, we were like, oh shit, what's this? And we laughed about it, we joked about it, but it still stings, it still hurts. And it's one of those things that is at the back of your mind as you go about your day to day for the next week or two. It's like, ooh, there was that video. How do people think about me? How do people perceive me? But I'm really glad that it happened. All of these things, even if they're negative at first, are massive opportunities to learn. It made me realize I do care about what people think about me, which is completely normal and it's what everybody does, but it's just useful information for me to recognize and it's helpful for the personal development process. All of these challenges are useful things. So no, it didn't bother me months after it happened. No, it doesn't make me sad now. I can happily talk about it. It doesn't really bother me. How do I feel about Hamza? 
for making that video? It's a difficult one. Um, I understand why he did it. I understand the benefits of doing it. I understand the negative repercussions of doing it. And I also recognize that he made a video afterwards saying that he didn't really recognize that I was a real person. When I made this video of Andrew Kirby, Andrew Kirby is a big self-improvement YouTuber. It felt like he wasn't a human. He's not a real person. He's a famous YouTuber. I didn't really realize that I had feelings and all that sort of stuff. So that's fine. Like I understand we're all human. We all make mistakes. None of us are perfect. We all have our selfish desires and it's okay. Um, or it's understandable at least to do things that gain our selfish desires, even if it affects other people in a negative way. So I have no, no resentment over him for doing that. I completely understand why he did it. Um, the, the only slight thing is it's like, well, should he unlist that video now? If he apologized to me in public and he has apologized to me in private. So <laughs> my name is Hamza. You may remember me from such films as Andrew Kirby is lying to you. <laughs> my apologies, bro, if that may have influenced your uh, court alive crisis. I'm sorry, man. But I'm pretty sure you've seen that video that I made. Should he unlist that video? But that's another question. He can do what he wants. I don't really care. If he feels like it's right to unlist that video, fine. It is quite frustrating when you search Andrew Kirby on YouTube. One of the first results is that I'm sure it's affected my business in some way, shape or form. But then again, he can do what he wants and I don't really care what he does. I know that there's going to be people like him that will try to step on me to get above and that's okay. I know there'll be multiple more people in the future. It's just part of the game. If anything, it's a sign that you're doing good things. So it is what it is. That's the video. Also, I had this community about dopamine detoxing. As you guys probably know, my dopamine detoxing YouTube playlist did incredibly well, got lots of views. So Hamza decided to make a Skillshare course on dopamine detoxing and he decided to go to my subreddit and comment on every single post trying to plug his Skillshare course, try and make some money. Again, it's this, this is the same thing as the video. I don't really have much to say about this. I don't really care. It is what it is. He's trying to earn his money. That's fair enough. Let's just move on. Like I used to spam different places. I used to spam comment section. Hamza and I are probably pretty, pretty similar in a, in a bunch of different ways. So it is what it is. It doesn't really bother me. Um, the only other things to say about him is that I know that he used to watch my videos and I have a crazy amount of respect for him. He's somebody that went from a dark period, similar from the sounds of it from a dark period that I went to, and he got out of it and he executed and he took action and now it's working. It's like another piece of information for you guys that are struggling and don't have the life that you want that you can do it. Like, he's just another success story. He was watching my videos, just like everybody else. He was in a rut, but yet he got out of the rut and he's doing incredible things now and he's earning bank now and it's great. He's a man that's shooting up like a skyrocket and it's inspiring to see and it's great and it's incredible and there's so much respect goes out for him for doing that and being somebody that actually executes out there. A couple other things to say. He talks a lot about women. He talks a lot about looks all of this stuff has lost its appeal for me. And I think that like, I, I, would never, I, I would never watch his main channel, Hamza. I would watch his, and I do occasionally watch his second channel, Hamza Unfiltered. He makes some decent content there. But his main channel just doesn't appear, appeal to me, guys. And I imagine it won't appeal to most of my audience who are kind of like past that sort of stuff. It's like the very, oh, I don't know how to describe it without like insulting people. It's like, the people that are very desperate for validation, the people that can't provide validation to themselves, go to the gym and focus heavily on looking good. Like that's like a huge desire for them. I want to look good. I want to look good. I want to look good. And they also want women and they want women's attention. So it's kind of like, I don't know. I, I imagine his audience is like the bottom level. So say men are on like level one to level 100. His audience is like level one to five. They're like the beginners. And again, it's not me. I not appeal to that sort of stuff. I imagine you guys won't, but I have a lot of respect to him for reaching down to those guys and giving them a positive message. His message is, is, is incredibly uplifting. It's like, you can do it. I know that he has mentioned in one of his unfiltered videos on his second channel that his goal is to make initially videos about women and about looks and those like, how do you describe it? It's like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, like the very bottom rung. 
And he's doing that, making those videos to attract those people, but then he's elevating them up into more personal development stuff. And if that's the case, then I fully respect it. It is what it is. It's great, actually. It's better than just is what it is. Um, so yeah, that's my perspective on Hamza. He's done some shady things in the past, but so have we all. Do I respect him? Yes, I respect him a lot. He's doing incredibly well and he's pushing himself and he's improving himself. And these are all admirable traits. So yeah, that's the truth about Hamza, at least from my perspective.